So you've got your Protect Lee Vault with OpenSense on it, either as a pre-install option through our website or you installed it yourself. And now you're thinking, where do I go from here? How do I hook this up to my home internet modem and why would I want to do that? Well, there are a few different reasons. The most important reason is security, as OpenSense will work as a firewall between your home network and the rest of the internet. But you can also use its VPN functionality, you can use it for web filtering, and more. Here's what you'll need. Your Protect Lee Vault pre-installed with OpenSense. If you have not yet installed OpenSense on your vault, we have a video tutorial on how to do that on the channel, link in the description below. Your home internet modem with web access, at least one ethernet cable, and a computer to access the OpenSense web interface. This part is optional, but it's recommended for configuring OpenSense. Once you have everything ready, we can begin setup. Start by connecting your modem to the vault. Take an ethernet cable and plug one end into the LAN port on your modem and the other end into the WAN port on the vault. By default, OpenSense assigns the LAN port to the first ethernet port and the WAN port to the second ethernet port. However, this changes depending on what unit is purchased. If you select OpenSense as a pre-install option on an FW2, 4, or 6 vault, we will assign WAN to port 1 and LAN to port 2 to correlate with the written label on the faceplate of the unit. On a V-series vault, we'll allow OpenSense to automatically determine the interface assignments, meaning port 1 will be LAN and port 2 will be WAN. We also allow OpenSense to automatically determine the interface assignments on a VP series vault, meaning port 1 will be LAN and port 2 will be WAN. But also on the VP6600, WAN and LAN will be configured to the 10GB Ethernet interfaces, meaning WAN will be IXL1, SFP plus 2, and LAN will be IXL0, SFP plus 1. Please note that if you want to use the SFP ports on the 6600, you'll need SFP modules which can be added while configuring your unit on our website or purchased separately on our accessories page. Just keep in mind that you can configure this however you'd like once you have the product in your hands. Modify it either in the OpenSense web interface or by console. Any Ethernet port on the vault can be configured to WAN or LAN. Check out our knowledge base article on how to install OpenSense on the vault, link in the description below, for more information on how we configure the interfaces if pre-installed by Protectly. Next, connect another Ethernet cable from one of the LAN ports on the vault to your computer. This will allow you to access the OpenSense web interface. OpenSense can be configured without using the web interface, but since we're going to be setting this up with our home network anyway, which more than likely has at least one computer on it, we're going to use this method for the sake of the tutorial. There could be a few differences here depending on what hardware you're working with. With many smaller internet service providers, OpenSense will ideally recognize the ports and connect to your modem automatically. But if it doesn't, you may need to access your modem settings and enable something called bridge mode or IP pass-through mode in order to allow your home internet connection to pass through the vault running OpenSense. This isn't always necessary, but doing so puts your vault at the edge of your private network instead of the router from your internet service provider. Another common issue is that you may need to reboot your modem while the vault is running in order for it to work properly. Be sure to leave the vault connected to the modem via Ethernet and also leave it powered on while you reboot the modem. Please refer to your modem's documentation for more information. Now that everything is connected, let's access the OpenSense web interface to configure your network settings. On your computer, open a web browser and type in the default IP address of the vault. This is usually 192.168.1.1. After receiving a warning message, which you can safely ignore, you'll be prompted to log in. The default username is root, and the default password is OpenSense. Once logged in, you'll be greeted with the OpenSense dashboard. You now have the option to configure your other settings, such as your domain name system or DNS servers, though this step is not required. By default, OpenSense will use your ISP's DNS servers. However, if you'd prefer to use Unbound DNS for enhanced privacy or security, you can manually configure those settings now as well. We'll leave a link to OpenSense's documentation for DNS settings in the video description below. With the basic configuration done, it's time to test your internet connection. Go back to the dashboard and check the status of your WAN interface. It should show an IP address if everything is working correctly. If you see an IP address, try opening a website on your computer. If it loads, congratulations, you've successfully connected your vault to your home modem. At this point, your vault is functioning as your primary router, but there's a lot more you can do with OpenSense. You can set up firewall rules, VLANs, VPNs, and more to secure and optimize your network. If you're interested in those advanced setups, let me know in the comments and we'll make a video on that too. 
That's it for today's video. Hopefully we were able to help you get your vault up and running with your home internet modem. If you like the video, go ahead and leave it a like, subscribe for more tech tutorials, and thanks for watching.